On February 22nd and 23rd of 1945, Allied formations consisting of about 3,500 heavy bombers and 5,000 fighter bomber aircraft rained hell all over Germany. The 15th and 8th U.S. Air Forces, along with the Royal Air Force Bomber Command, destroyed critical transportation systems at Bamberg, Stendal, Würzburg, and many more cities. It was all part of Operation Clarion, a series of massive Allied bombing raids across Germany to cripple its communication networks, including rail stations, bridges, docks, and transport facilities. However, the Wehrmacht was suddenly reinvigorated by the Allies' secondary objective to demoralize the population by deliberately targeting civilian areas, keeping the movement of high-priority traffic while also planning their own counterattack. The End of the Reich The Allied forces began bombing Germany from the skies in 1943, with the Royal Air Force Bomber Command approving and ordering the vicious bombing raids that would decimate most of the German territory only two years later. With the help of the U.S. Army Air Forces, the British carried out successful strategic bombing campaigns over most of the German-controlled territories in Europe. Then, as the war was reaching its end, the Allied bombing raids followed the same path. German civilian casualties began to mount up as the Allies targeted more towns and cities using incendiary explosives that turned everything into dust and debris. In early 1945, German anti-air defenses and aircraft could not keep up against the overwhelming enemy air forces, but they kept fighting to defend the motherland. Then, between February 13th and 15th, the city of Dresden was devastated by a firestorm that originated from the 3,900 tons of explosives and incendiary devices that decimated over 30,000 civilians. The following day, Bomber Command launched more missions on other German cities, and Bessel was bombed within three days. The city of Chemnitz followed, and RAF then isolated the lands of Dortmund, Worms, and the Mittelland Canal overpass at Gravenhorst. All the bombs from these raids carried both explosive and incendiary ordnance to maximize damage. Meanwhile, the USAAF's 8th Air Force focused its raids on German transportation under the command of Lieutenant General James Doolittle and targeted Cottbus, Rheine, Hamm, Munster, and other German cities. Then, on February 20th, the 8th sent over 800 bombers to bomb the city of Nuremberg, which had so far remained untouched by the war. Over 2,900 tons of ordnance were dropped over the city, reducing many sectors to rubble. Despite the relentless attacks over Germany, its people and the Wehrmacht were determined to keep fighting to the last man. However, by February 21st, Allied weather forecasters predicted clear skies over Germany and notified the Unified Command that it was the perfect time to launch Operation Clarion. Operation Clarion Operation Clarion had been in the minds of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and other leaders as far back as the invasion of Normandy, with the massive air offensive aimed to deliver a final and decisive blow to German morale. The objective was to target small German rail and water communication centers in towns or cities untouched by the war to disrupt the area's economic life and deteriorate civilian morale. According to military intelligence, this strategy would have direct repercussions on the tactical decisions in the front lines by sorely affecting the German fighting spirit. General Karl Spatz, the commander of the Strategic Air Forces in Europe, was fully committed to the operation, but many staff members disagreed with the idea. According to the official U.S. Army Armed Forces history, General Frederick Anderson would write that, quote, There is absolutely no basis for the hope that such an operation would cause disorder among the civil population of Germany by the feeling of fear. Anderson believed that the opposite would happen, and German resistance would stiffen. He also considered that bombing vital civilian targets was a bad idea, as it would only make life more difficult for the population and directly impact how prisoners of war would be treated by the German people and armed forces. He continued, quote, Operation Clarion constitutes open war against civilians, who would react badly in those states and place our forces in a defensive position before the world. General Ira C. Eaker, second in command of Doolittle's 8th Air Force, also opposed the execution of Clarion, as he was not keen on the idea of the subject area bombing. He wrote to Spatz that, quote, It will absolutely convince the Germans that we are the barbarians they say we are, for it would be perfectly obvious to them that this is primarily a large-scale attack on civilians, as in fact it of course will be. Of all the people killed in this attack, over 95% of them can be expected to be civilians. Clearing the Skies Operation Clarion proceeded, despite the opposition from a significant contingent of American airmen. Still, General Eaker wrote, quote, If the time ever comes when we want to attack the civilian populace with a view to breaking civil morale, such a plan as the one suggested is probably the way to do it. I personally, however, have become completely convinced that you are right, and we should never allow the history of this war 
to convict us of throwing the strategic bomber at the man in the street. I think there's a better way we can do our share to defeat the enemy, but if we are to attack the civil population, I'm certain that we should wait until its morale is much nearer the breaking point, and until the weather favors the operation more than it will at any time in the winter or early spring. Although the Americans' intention was to damage the German morale, they knew that casualties were inevitable and would mount up very quickly. They also believed that the message to avoid tracks, railway stations, and freight yards would be clear to the German populace. In his book Wings of Judgment, American Bombing in World War II, author Ronald Schaefer told of how General Spatz issued a set of instructions to prevent a similar controversy as the one generated after the bombing of Dresden. Quote, Public relations and communique officers must be advised to state clearly in communiques and all press releases the military nature of all targets attacked. Special care should be taken against giving any impression that this operation is aimed at the civilian population or intended to terrorize them. In addition to the above, care must be taken to ensure that all crews are thoroughly briefed that attacks will be limited to military objectives. Consequently, Operation Clarion was scheduled for February 22nd. The Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Force, or SHAFE, stated that the Anglo-American air power had to use every available aircraft to maximize the operation's impact. If successful, the destruction of the German rail and water transportation facilities from areas untouched by the conflict would convince the German population that defeat was inevitable. The plan called for the 15th Air Force based in Italy to operate in southern Germany, and the 8th Air Force would bomb towns in Germany's central and northern sectors. Meanwhile, RAF Bomber Command would keep its monopoly of the Ruhr region. It was also ordered that all heavy bombers had to attack from altitudes of 10,000 feet or lower instead of the usual 20,000 feet to maximize their accuracy. In addition, the bombers would be joined by fighters that would perform independent bombing and strafing, while small units would carry out the attacks to avoid wasting time organizing large formations. Finally, on February 21st, over 3,500 heavy bombers and 4,900 fighters got ready for Operation Clarion. Hell from Above on February 22nd, with clear skies over most of Germany, the 8th Air Force sortied 1,372 B-17 and B-24 bombers and some 670 fighters, dropping over 4,000 tons of bomb load over their assigned targets. In total, 85 bombers were damaged from the scattered flak guns that protected the small German towns. Luftwaffe resistance was scarce, and the counterattack consisted of only about 30 FW-190s, ME-109s, and a dozen new ME-262s engaging the American fighter escorts. However, they still managed to take down some bombers and fighters in their desperate fight to defend the motherland. American fighters claimed to have destroyed 22 oil tank cars, 232 rail cars, and 100 locomotives, while targets hit included Stendal, Wittenberg, Bamberg, Peine, Northam, and Zingen, among others. The 15th Air Force then sorted 231 B-17s and 540 B-24s with support from 300 P-51s and P-38s and bombed 40 oil tank cars, 300 railroad cars, 100 locomotives, and 32 marshalling yards. Additionally, the 15th received support from the 9th Air Force, which also bombed several railroad bridges, marshalling yards, and rail junctions. The RAF Tactical Command conducted their own attacks successfully, but they lost more aircraft than the Americans. They claimed to have destroyed 20 enemy aircraft and more than 800 railroad cars, 10 bridges, and made more than 200 rail cuts at the cost of 10 bombers, 21 mosquitoes, and more than 20 fighters. The operation was considered a resounding success, and it was repeated on February 23rd on a much smaller scale, with over 4,000 aircraft dropping about 4,000 tons on eight marshalling yards such as Weimar, Plauen, Neumarkt, Ansbach, and Kitzingen. After two successful days of bombings, the country was left in flames. No German town was left untouched by the destruction left by the bombing raids. Still, despite the heavy blow the transportation system suffered, the Germans kept fighting, whether by will or obligation. Also, the Wehrmacht kept the movement of high-priority traffic, and the Luftwaffe kept sacrificing its pilots against the overwhelming superiority of their enemy's air forces. No further clarion operations were attempted again, but the mass bombing raids of Germany continued until the very end of the war. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of Operation Clarion and the mounting German civilian casualties provoked by the Allied bombing raids. Stay tuned.